Welcome to Chess Dog, where players come to get better at chess. My name is John, and today we have a game against Andrea Botez, with Andrea Botez, and Tani Adewumi. Uh, it's a blitz game played in, in the park, but it's a very interesting game. Tani plays a risky opening, gets himself in quite a bit of trouble, and has to see if he can dig out of the hole he's created for himself. It leads to a very interesting conclusion. Andrea Botez has the white pieces. Tani has the black pieces. She plays d4. He replies with e5. Now, this is a questionable gambit. It's called the England gambit, not the England, like the country, E-N-G-L-A-N-D, England with a U instead of an A. And it's based on this idea. White takes on e5, which is what Andrea did. Knight c6, knight f3. And here's the trick. Basically, it's just one trick for this entire opening. Black plays queen to e7, and when white defends the e5 pawn, which is attacked twice by playing bishop to f4, black plays queen to b4, check, which delivers check, attacks the bishop, attacks the b2 pawn. So white responds with bishop to d2, and black plays queen takes b2. Then white plays bishop to c3 to kick the queen away and, uh, you know, have a, a well-developed piece, but there's one last trick. Black can play bishop to b4, which pins the c3 bishop to the king, so it cannot capture the queen, and black is now just winning. After bishop takes bishop, knight takes bishop. The threat of queen takes rook at a1, and knight takes c2 check, forking the uh, king and the rook. All of that just leads to a decisive position. So, in this line, what white should do is just play knight to c3, and then after knight takes pawn e4, and white's just better in this position. It's pretty, pretty simple. Tani, however, instead of playing queen to e7, plays bishop to c5. This has been played before, even by a couple of good players, but it's a very suspicious line. It just looks bad to me, and uh, he gets himself in, in trouble in this position. Andrea plays knight to c3. He plays d6. Bishop to f4 to defend the pawn. Knight g e7. E d6, c d6. So up to this point, Tani uh, made a risky, really a bad opening choice, and he's just plain worse, and he's a pawn down. So let's see now if Tani Atawumi is able to get out of this bad position that he has down a pawn. She plays e3, and I like this move. It doesn't gain as much space as e4, but it reduces the mobility of that bishop at c5. Uh, it's a good move. Castles, bishop c4, bishop to e6. What Tani is doing is neutralizing that bishop at c4, allowing it to trade itself off for the bishop at e6. The problem is, black is the one that's given up the material. He's the one that should have the initiative, but doesn't. Bishop e6, f e6, castles, and e5. So, Tani's gained a little bit. He has more central space, and now a 2 to 1 pawn majority in the center. It's not much, but it's a little something to work with. Andrea plays bishop to g5, pinning the knight h6 hitting the bishop, bishop h4, g5 hitting the bishop again, the bishop goes back to g3. Now, this decision to play h6 and g5 with these two pawns is very risky, and from a theoretical standpoint, it's not very good. But from a practical standpoint, it is. So while there are questionable ideas behind the move, it creates weak squares, it also creates a possibility to attack. That h and g pawn could be used to attack white if white plays inaccurately. So there's compensation for his decision to play h6 and g5. Queen d7, knight d5, jumping into that square. Queen e6, that's a mistake. Uh, she could have played knight to c7 and forked the queen on e6 and the rook at a8. Uh, she plays e4, supporting the knight instead, and she doesn't get another chance. Tani plays rook a to d8, a3 to expand on the queen side. Knight to d4, a good strategic decision from Tani. He's taking a knight that's on the queen side, which is not where the action is right now, and trading it off for a knight, the one on f3, that's defending the king. So he's taking a piece not involved in the attack, but taking away a piece that is involved in defending the king. A good strategic move. Knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, hitting the pawn at b2. The queen jumps into h5, keeps pressure on that pawn at h6, and helps control those weakened light squares around Tani's king that were created by h6 and g5. Knight takes d5, pawn takes d5. The queen can't recapture because white's queen would just play queen g6 check. Queen to f6. So we see Tani is 
piling on that f2 square, right? He's got the rook at f8, the queen at f6, and the bishop at d4, all aiming at f2. So that's where he's starting to generate real pressure from that bad opening. Now he's got a pretty decent position. c3, kicking the bishop, bishop to b6, rook a to d1. Uh, what Andrea would like to do, because there's so much pressure on that f file, you know, hitting f2 there, what she wants to do is play the rook to d3 and over to f3, hitting that queen, and neutralize that pressure on the f file. King to g7, rook to d3, continuing with the maneuver to f3, queen to g6. So uh, Tani offers the exchange of queens, and uh, she should take it, uh, because he has compensation. Uh, the bishop on g3 has very little mobility. He'll continue to have some pressure on f2. Uh, but if Andrea doesn't exchange queens, that will allow Tani to advance those h and g pawns, and she doesn't trade queen. She avoids the trade, plays queen to e2, now h5. The tables are beginning to turn, and Tani now, having equalized the position, is now pushing for an advantage. He's threatening to advance h4 and trap that bishop at g3. h3 gives that bishop a way to tuck away so it doesn't get trapped. Rook to f7, he wants to continue to pile on that f-file. Play rook f7, the, rook of the other rook moves over, he's doubling on the file. Both rooks and the bishop aiming at f2. b4, rook d to f8, a4. She wants to get that bishop off that diagonal, hitting f2. She wants to play a5 and force it off of that diagonal. So Tani plays a6, so the bishop can stay on the diagonal after a5. c4. So now, Andrea wants to play c5. If Tani takes that pawn with his pawn, then the e5 pawn would be left undefended. So those pawns are beginning to roll, and Tani needs, does, need, does need to act on that. Bishop to d4, putting the bishop on the other side of those pawns so they can't block out the bishop with c5. Now, in this particular position, it might have been a good idea for Andrea, because her position's getting worse to go ahead and sacrifice the exchange with a move like rook takes bishop, pawn takes rook, and c5, with the bishop aiming at the d6 pawn and the b5, or c5 and d5 pawns abreast in the center there, they're going to create a lot of counterplay. And uh, as it turns out, she ends up having to give up the exchange there anyway in a much worse position. This would have been a good opportunity for her to have done it. She plays b5. Now here, Tani can go right ahead and play h4, and gain space and open up lines against the king. He could go ahead and do that now. He plays a5 instead. Queen to d2, which aims at this a5 pawn. And he, again, Tani could still go ahead and play h4. He plays rook to f5. It defends g5 laterally and gives the queen room to go to f7 or f6. And now would be he would be tripling on that f file. So the bishop at d4 and all three heavy pieces would be aiming at f2. She goes ahead and takes the pawn. This is probably her last chance to make a reasonable sacrifice of the exchange. She'll get a strong bishop and a pawn for the rook and a counterplay on the queen side. Uh, but she goes ahead and takes the pawn at a5, and this time Tani does not uh, miss his chance. He plays h4, and she has to go ahead and play rook takes bishop at a bad moment, because if right now she actually plays the bishop back to h2, then watch what happens. Rook to f2, rook f2, bishop f2, check, and for king to h1, queen takes rook. She would lose the rook and the game. So he has to give it up, and what he, what Tani does, he makes a, a really good decision here. Instead of taking the rook at d4, he takes the bishop instead. I mean, his whole strategy has been about ta attacking this f2 square, and has been for some time. He continues to stay focused on his target of f2. The rook comes back to d2 to help defend f2. Rook takes f2, rook d f2. Now this is a very important point. Black can recapture on f2 with the rook or the pawn. One is right and one is wrong. Uh, the wrong decision would be rook takes f2. And after rook takes, pawn takes, check, king f2, queen c2, check, the best black would have here is a, a perpetual check and a draw. Tani makes the right decision. He takes with the pawn. Now here, white cannot recapture the pawn, because if she does, queen to b1, check. And when the king moves, rook takes rook. And the rook couldn't block at f1, because it would still be...
captured. So now Andrea has to move the king away, and that pawn at f2 is an unbelievable problem for white, and it will remain so for some time. e4 uh, wants to connect those pawns. A faster win actually would have been queen to d3, directly attacking the f1 square with the queen, and uh, there's really nothing a white can do here. If the rook moves, then the f pawn would just queen. So that would actually have won at that exact moment. e4, though, is definitely a good strategic idea. Queen to c3 check. Queen to f6. Black is fine with the exchange of queens. If queen takes queen, then the pawn would just, would just march. Queen to e3. Queen to f4. Same story. Uh, if queen takes queen, then rook takes, and the pawn would just advance. It would be unstoppable. Queen to d4 check, queen to e5 blocking the check, queen to e3, can't take the queen still, because after this, the pawn still just marches forward. The queen is needed to stop that pawn. Queen to e3, queen to f5, a5. Now, Tani makes a move that looks really good. It's definitely a move that anyone would consider playing even in a tournament game, and that's g4. But this actually gives up the advantage just for a moment, uh, if Andrea plays the right move. And the right move here is a6. And the idea is, after pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, that this a6 pawn will actually advance towards the queening square, and black would have to use one of their heavy pieces, probably the rook, to capture the pawn, and then f2 would no longer be defended. And uh, that would equalize the game. She plays queen to d4 check instead, and king to g6. Now h4, g3. The pawn at g3 defends the pawn at f2, and what that does is it frees up Tani's heavy pieces, the rook and the queen. Now they can move around a bit while the f2 pawn is defended by a pawn, so he's really got a clamp on the position now. Queen to b6. Rook to h8. Now, this is an inaccuracy. This also gives Andrea a chance to uh, survive the game. She plays queen captures d6 with check. So Tani has to react to that check. King to f7. Queen to g3. Now that g3 pawn is gone. e3. He uses the e pawn to defend f2, and Andrea cannot capture that pawn. If queen takes, then rook to h4 check. And queen h3, rook h3, g h3, queen h3, mate, or yeah, mate, this would be completely forced. So the e3 pawn cannot be captured. King to h2, queen to f6, the rook and queen hit the h4 pawn. King to h3, helping def to defend the pawn. Queen to f5, check. King h2, rook h7. Queen to c7, check. Now, Andrea has to play perfect chess to survive this position with very little time on the clock. King to g8, queen to g3, check, king to h8. What Tani is doing is trying to hide his king from the checks. He knows if he can get the king out of these constant checks, he'll win. Queen to b8, check, king to g7, queen g3, queen g6 blocks the check. Queen c7, check, and king to f6. Now this is a really sneaky move from Tani, and it works. She plays queen to d6, check, and as soon as she did that, Tani immediately exclaimed, she blundered after this move was made. He plays king to f5. And uh, queen d6 is a bad mistake because after king to f5, there are really no more checks. There's nothing left for white to do to keep the position going. Now, she immediately blundered with g3, which just hangs the queen. But it doesn't actually matter. Because let's say instead she played a move like queen to e6 check. Tani just takes the queen, and after the pawn takes... King to g4 threatens rook to h4 mate, and if g3 to defend that pawn, king goes into f3. The rook at h7 keeps the e pawn from advancing, and there's nothing white can do to keep Tani from playing e2 and uh, queening one of those pawns while winning the rook, and the game was over. So uh, this was a very interesting game, a, a pretty risky opening, not a very good one, but Tani was able to, able to fight back and create all sorts of counter chances, uh, a really interesting game. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.